Wellesley College is a wonderful boys' school in Days Bay, Wellington. Today, Wellesley is a place where boys aged 5 to 13 years can learn and grow in a unique setting between the bush and the sea. Maori legend says that Kupe, a great chief, discovered the area now known as Wellington in the 10th century. Wellington was settled by British settlers in 1839 and named after Arthur Wellesley, the first Duke of Wellington and victor of the Battle of Waterloo. Wellesley College history begins with Banks Commercial College in Wellington City around 1903 to 1904. Banks Commercial College has been in central Wellington on the terrace. It started as a school for secretarians and business. Croydon School, or Wellington Diocesan Boys School, started by Gladys Somerville in 1907 at 81 Hill Street, Thornton, Wellington. It became so successful that Mrs. Somerville decided to move it to somewhere larger. Croydon School was able to buy Days Bay House and the grounds because its use as a resort and sports place began to fail. Days Bay House was built in 1903 for ship owner J.H. Williams, who had a ferry service and was an Eastern Harbour property developer. His Wellington Steam Ferry Company Limited made Days Bay a destination resort and sports complex. Days Bay House opened on October 9th, 1903. It was accommodation with 50 guests and their staff. The building and the sink inside cost £9,000. It was lit by electricity with its water supplied from its own dam up in the gully. The hotel only had a little bit of success. The remaining property, a large field, was then bought by the Wellington City Council and named Williams Park. Banks College moved into the old Croydon School at 81 Hill Street, Thorndon, after Gladys Somerville moved her day school, Croydon School, to become a boarding school at Days Bay. This was started by William Henry Neville, who was also known as Harry. He was the secretary of Banks Commercial College. He saw this opportunity. His school started with 20 boys whose parents did not want them to go to school in Days Bay as it did not have an option of day school, just boarding. In 1913, Mrs Somerville bought Days Bay House and the grounds so she could increase the size of Croydon School. It was bought for £6,000. She opened it as Croydon School for Boys in February 1914, moving her private day school here from the city. In 1914, Banks College started a day school for boys in Wellington City. In 1919, Croydon School was sold for £10,000 to the Church of England and became Wellington Diocesan School Days Bay, but was still known as Croydon. Croydon is now one of the names of the houses at Wellesley. At this time, the school board staff were Dr. Sprott. Bishop, Miss Baber, Marsden School, Reverend R. Franklin, St. Barnabas, Rose News, and the four following men, E. Mabin, W. J. Birch, G. Shirtcliffe, and J. F. Studholm. The generous help of the last four men was recognised by the bishop when the school reopened on 6 June 1919. In 1920, Banks College's day school, not the business college, became Wellesley College. At the same time, they moved to 98, the terrace in Wellington City. Croydon, now in Days Bay, was a boarding school. The school board already had day schools in Waverley, Masterton, Ty Happy, St Margaret's, Martin, Hawera and St. Mark's Wellington, Reverend Richard Henry Hobday became the principal in 1920 and would remain until 1922. When Days Bay House became at Croydon Preparatory School for Boys, there was very little change to the grounds and buildings.
The old croquet lawn became the sports field, and in 1920s, the hotel's bowling green became the boys' tennis courts. The rugby field remained at the southern side of the driveway but was not part of the school grounds. The pavilion and its amusements, like the ferry and the wharf, became a part of out-of-bounds school life. The flag ball came from the mast of the Coba. The Coba was built to be the fancy steam yacht of a very rich mining businessman, William Longworth. The upstairs on the northern side, two pairs of bedrooms became dorms one and two. The upstairs guest sitting room became dorm three. The slightly closed in upstairs central veranda became dormitory for the bigger boys. A well-built first floor room was added on high posts at the northeast corner to form a sick bay. The main sitting room was used by the principal. Boys were not allowed to use the main staircase. Two corrugated iron walled additions were made at the back of the main building. One was used as an assembly hall and gymnasium, with a very rarely used fireplace, all on the same level as the main building. The second was a two-storey block of four small classrooms up on the slope behind it, each with a tiny fireplace. The stairs to the upper floor were very steep and infant classes were held in the north-facing rooms of the main building by the gymnasium. The bishop, Dr. Sprott, advised that failing health had forced Mrs. Somerville to retire and she would not remain head of the school. However, she expressed her strong opinion that the school should have her headmaster. The Reverend R. H. Hobday was appointed in 1920. The opening ceremony finished with a hearty singing of the national anthem. A little church called St. Martin's Church was put beside the school in 1922 at what is now Tupi Toy Toy Road. Much of its character was given by its shape, the fashionable way it had been painted in the high white washed pebble dash walls. At services, a person played its harmonium. Wellesley College at 98 Vitae with Wellington was registered in 1933 to W.H. Stevens, limited in 1940, William Hutton Stevens, lease toyed and stole from the Wellington Diocesan board and moved his day still Wellesley College, which has been on the terrace two days ago. The pupils at Croydon School were taken over by W.H. Stevens, limited, the company was required to give religious instruction to follow the beliefs of the Church of England in cooperation with the local vicar over some lasting resistance, Mr. Stevens declared two school merged. Mr. Stevens had taught locally at Wellington College for 15 years starting there in 1917 before becoming head of Wellesley College in 1933. He carried out the school merger in 1949 and retired in 1965. In 1965, the diocesan board took over management of the school again and in the end chose to keep the name Wellesley. In the corrugated iron additions, with the sick bay building and laundry were demolished and new buildings built there and on the former bowling green tennis courts. The new school took boarders and day boys from primary to secondary levels, but the secondary department was closed in 1946. New classrooms were opened at the beginning of 1969 and the new gymnasium hall at the beginning of the third term on the, of the same year. The boarding school at Wellesley College closed in 1970 and the St. Martin Church building was removed in 1973. The last major development took place in 1999 
where some of the old buildings were demolished. In their place, our stunning new quad and the specialist and senior block were built. We hope you enjoyed our movie on the history of Wellesley. What does the future hold? Well, that's up to us to create.